Hi there. So following up on the porpoising uh, setup video, I, I can't pronounce the word porpoise. Um, yeah, so following up on the porpoising video, um, I just had an idea to talk about uh, what perhaps could have been done to predict and, um, you know, avoid the problem um, before it even happened from an engineering point of view. Um, so first of all, I must say I don't work in this area uh, specifically, but um, I've worked in similar areas and therefore I'm purely hypothesizing here. Um, so what I'm showing on screen uh, here is um, like a v yeah, typical vehicle dynamics simulation. Uh, this is uh, most likely Adams. Um, it's yeah, just an animation I found off the internet. Um, so this is quite typically used to um, study ride and handling properties of a certain uh, chassis setup that one might come up with um, to to you know investigate different uh, hard points, um, different spring rates, damper rates, all this kind of stuff. Um, but there's another domain of simulations, which is CFD, uh, so computational fluid dynamics, um, which I haven't done at all. Uh, but the idea there is you design a certain shape uh, to your racing car or, you know, aeroplane, whatever. Um, and you try to simulate uh, what the interaction of that shape is with the airflow. And from that, um, you know, imagine just a whole bunch of um, air particles, uh, and 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 the and, and the simulation software will then just follow each particle, and and and, and then based on the, the the pressures and so on that's generated as the air flows over all the surfaces, um, try to predict what happens. Um, and I, I, I would imagine the, the, the vehicle teams would probably, um, I mean, the racing teams or, um, in this case would, uh, probably, um, run CFDs, you know, of course, for different, uh, designs of, of, of their, of their racing car, but they probably would, um, also investigate, uh, things like the pitch sensitivity, um, the yaw sensitivity, so like pitch sensitivity is like if the vehicle is rocking back and forth, how how sensitive is the um, are the wings uh, and, and and floors to um, uh, stall, uh, for example, um, which would be bad because then yeah you, you have a very un unpredictable ve um, vehicle and and also the 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 yaw sensitivity. So because like when the vehicle is going through a through a corner the the vehicle isn't actually hitting the air straight on it it is at a slight angle uh due to you know the the just the way um the 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 vehicle corners uh, so like if you if you look at a vehicle as it goes through a turn especially a very tight turn you can see clearly it is not hitting the 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 wind straight on um but uh so I haven't run CFDs, but I can imagine it is something that takes quite a bit of time. Um, and I think this is where the problem comes in, in the sense that um, if you wanted to predict the purposing, uh, whether that would happen for each uh, vehicle design, um, you would have to do something like the following. So you, you'd have to somehow couple the vehicle dynamic simulation to a CFD simulation. Um, and maybe this is something that some teams are already able to do. Maybe there's even commercial software out there to do that. So I'm, I'm not working in the field, so I'm not aware. Uh, so I haven't certainly haven't heard of it, but um, I can imagine that, um, you know, th this can, be, I would imagine this is quite challenging because of just how how time intensive it is to run CFD. So you like you would have to imagine after each time step of your vehicle dynamic simulation, um, 
you would have to feed the new position of the vehicle through to the uh, sorry excuse me um wife's trying to call me um you, you would have to feed the position of the the vehicle through uh to your cfd uh simulation um which would be you know an entirely new shape uh normally i would i would imagine the the model they feed the cfd is totally static uh so it's like you're having to generate a new shape uh so in fact that I, I guess I'm missing, in fact, one one step in this. this is, so I, I would imagine in between here, uh, th there's probably an intermediary step, which is like feeding the position to your 3D CAD hardware. Um, just a second. Um, so imagine you have to um, feed the position to a CAD software to somehow automate the export of a 3D file of the shape of the vehicle in that particular stance uh, at, that, at that moment in time. And then you have to import that into the CFD software to calculate all the... Um, you know the, the the forces generated by the airflow at that moment in time feed that back into your vehicle dynamic simulation to calculate the new position of the vehicle you know and, and repeat and and then so this would be in my imagination extremely time intensive which is probably why you know the teams were totally caught off guard by this because yeah it, it, it is quite challenging so so, you know, with, with some teams um, suffering more from porpoising than others, there's two possibilities. Either they just were lucky and, and, and stumbled on the design, uh, which, um, you know, just by luck doesn't suffer from this porpoising problem as much. Or maybe um, one of the team, you know, some of the teams which don't suffer from the problem might have done some simulations like this to 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 prevent the problem from happening so you know the the only people who know whether it's one or the other are, are, are only going to be the engineers working in those teams and yeah i have no insight to that so i can only um hypothesize as to as to what's happening um and yeah like from from my prior um work experience the, the the only thing similar that i've seen uh in in this you know going in this direction is is what's called fluid structure interaction simulation so i myself haven't done any of this but i have um you know had colleagues who were doing fluid structure interaction simulation or trying to set up fluid structure interaction simulation at the time it was mainly it was mainly to to try and understand the um how the shim stacks in a in the damper would um, would deflect uh, under under different um, flow, uh, so yeah, at different uh, speeds of the damper to to understand you know whether the the, the shim stack would be uh, durable, for example. But um, so I know like commercially fluid structure interaction simulation does exist, but what I don't know is whether something you know this advanced exists also for an entire vehicle so it's like typically fluid structure interaction simulation because it's like coupling cfd with fea so fea so finite element analysis um simulation it's like coupling cfd with fea um in one software uh i imagine that's already you know hard enough imagine trying to couple a, the, the the modeling of an entire vehicle um with with cfd so so i i think it's quite challenging it's it's not impossible i mean there's a lot of very clever and talented people in the in in form one team so it's it's definitely possible that you know somebody might have done it um if not i mean here's an idea they you know somebody should try and develop it for sure it'll give a competitive advantage who to um whichever team is able to um, to come up with something like this okay so uh hope it was interesting uh some 
uh, you know, Thursday night ramblings uh, after having having a, having a beer. Um, all right, till next time. Hope of, hope it was interesting. <laughs>